Good afternoon. And thank you, uh, everyone who could join us here live as well as uh, live stream. Uh, every day at the Office of Attorney General of the District of Columbia, we work extremely hard to make our city fairer, more safe, and more just. That means that we stand up. Excuse me. There have never been as many cameras as there are here today. That means we stand up for all D.C. residents. We hold bad actors accountable when they cause harm. It means we seek justice. We use all the legal tools we have to uncover the truth and right wrongs. And it means we stand up for the fundamental principle that no one, no matter how powerful they are, is above the law. We're here today to talk about the Washington Commanders. For years, the team and its owner have caused very real and very serious harm and then lied about it to dodge accountability and to continue to rake in profits. So far, they seem to have gotten away with it, but that stops today. Today, we're filing a consumer protection lawsuit, a civil lawsuit against Dan Snyder, the Washington Commanders, the National Football League, and the NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell for colluding to deceive residents of the District of Columbia about their investigation into a toxic workplace culture that impacted employees, especially women. All of that deception was done to protect their profits and their image. With this lawsuit, we're standing up for DC residents who were repeatedly lied to and deceived. They have a right to know the truth about the companies they support with their hard earned dollars, the commanders, Mr. Snyder, the National Football League, and Roger Goodell deprived them of this right. Since the fall of 2021, we've been careful and thoroughly investigating the Washington commanders and Mr. Snyder related to allegations of sexual harassment and workplace misconduct and the circumstances around the NFL's so-called independent investigation into these allegations. We've interviewed numerous witnesses, including former team employees who witnessed and experienced the conduct at issue. We reviewed thousands of internal documents produced by the commanders and the National Football League, including emails. What we found, what the evidence overwhelmingly established what we will prove in court is clear wrongdoing and violations of D.C. residents' consumer rights. The defendants lied about what they knew, and then they lied about what they were going to do about it, all in the service of protecting image and profit. First, we allege that Mr. Snyder lied to D.C. consumers when he denied knowing anything, anything about the allegations of a hostile work environment and culture of sexual harassment. In fact, the evidence shows Mr. Snyder was not only aware of the toxic culture within his organization, he encouraged it and he participated in it. Mr. Snyder exerted a high level of personal control over everything the commanders did. And his misconduct gave others permission to treat women in the same demeaning manner. Mr. Snyder dictated everything from which photos of cheerleaders were used in an annual swimsuit calendar to how revealing the uniforms would be. 
He directed his employees to create voyeuristic videos of partially clad cheerleaders from calendar shoots, from footage that the cheerleaders had no idea even existed. When Mr. Snyder was told about allegations of male executives and employees making unwanted sexual comments and propositions toward other employees, he was often dismissive. And you know the trick. He blamed repeatedly the victims. For example, when a longtime commander's broadcaster was caught making inappropriate sexual comments, that's Mr. Michael, about a commander's intern, Mr. Snyder shrugged it off, calling the man a sweetheart who wouldn't hurt anyone. In another incident, Mr. Snyder directed the firing of a cheerleader who had reported sexual misconduct by a player in order to minimize distractions from the players. There were no consequences whatsoever for the player who allegedly acted inappropriately. Despite all of the evidence of Mr. Snyder's knowledge of and participation in the hostile workplace culture, when news stories broke, Mr. Snyder falsely claimed he knew nothing about it. He did this in order to insulate himself from consequences, protect his image, and protect his profit. Mr. Snyder made public statements claiming he was unaware of these allegations until they surfaced in the media. He also claimed he had been too hands off as an owner and allowed others to have day-to-day -day control over the team. These attempts to deflect attention away from himself and blame others do not stand the test of scrutiny. They're false statements designed to mislead the fans that Mr. Snyder needed to continue to make profits and to continue to burnish an image that was not squared off by the facts. Second, we allege the, that the National Football League and its commissioner, Roger Goodell, Mr. Snyder, and the commanders misled the public about what was being done to address the allegations of harassment and the toxic culture that the commanders maintained. They did all of this to hide the truth, protect their images, and let the profits continue to roll. In 2020, the Washington Post publicly reported a shocking broken, broken team culture one where sexual misconduct, harassment, and misogyny ran rampant for decades. Unsurprisingly, DC fans and the fans of the National Football League were outraged and wanted answers. Some fans even threatened, to this day, to boycott the team. Above all, fans, especially DC residents, just wanted to know the truth. Fearing that their image and profits were under threat, the commanders and Mr. Snyder attempted to reassure fans by publicly launching an investigation into the allegations of sexual harassment and abuse. And after the public raised concerns about whether the team could credibly investigate itself, the National Football League claimed that they were stepping in to assume oversight. That led fans to believe the process would be independent of Mr. Snyder's influence. At the time, Mr. Snyder himself noted that this change in oversight would ensure, and I quote, the results are thorough, complete, and trusted by the fans, the players, the employees, and the public. But this, of course, was all for show. In reality, the commanders and the National Football League secretly entered into an agreement about the investigation that the public didn't know about. The public didn't know about the agreement that the National Football League and Dan Snyder 
entered into about the so-called independent investigation. This agreement enabled information about the investigation to be shared with Mr. Snyder and gave him the keys to determine what could and what could not be shared with the public. Furthermore, the National Football League turned a blind eye about the investigation to Mr. Snyder's attempts at preventing victims and witnesses from talking to investigators. The NFL even ignored Mr. Snyder's attempts to buy the silence of victims and witnesses through additional settlements and, of course, non-disclosure agreements. When the 10-month investigation was complete, the National Football League effectively buried the findings. The fans received a whopping seven sentences, mostly reiterating what they already knew. So let's recap. We were led to believe that Mr. Snyder would not interfere with the independent, quote unquote, investigation. He did. We were led to believe that the public would not be left out of the process. We were. We were led to believe real change would happen. We're still waiting. I ask you, does any part of this investigation sound independent? Does any of this sound like accountability? Of course not. That's why we're suing Mr. Snyder, the commanders, the National Football League, and the commissioner, Roger Goodell. Because you can't lie to DC residents in order to protect your image, your profits, and get away with it. No matter who you are, no one, not Mr. Snyder, not Mr. Goodell, no entity, not the commanders, not even the National Football League, is above the law. And let me just say a couple words about the process that will ensue. It's going to be public. The complaint is public. Pursuant to the laws of civil procedure, Mr. Snyder, the NFL, Mr. Goodell, the commanders, have every right to answer the complaint they can seek to have our case dismissed. We will issue subpoenas. We will seek testimony under oath, deposition. I promise you, let me just give you a hunch. The depositions, not likely to occur on a yacht, but in a conference room in the District of Columbia, okay? Because no one is above the law. I want to thank uh, my colleagues at the Office of the Attorney General who have literally toiled for a year without any preconception or bias about what they would find. We're here as people who care about D.C. residents and who care about the principle that no one is above the law. With that, I would uh, love to have uh, my colleagues uh, who led uh, the investigation and indeed the litigation uh, come up. Um, we're going to get to some q and I'm sure there are going to be some excellent questions, questions I hope uh, that I can answer. Uh, if I cannot, I'll ask my colleagues uh, to answer uh, those questions to the extent that the questions, uh, you know, are extremely uh, specific and, you know, get into the weeds of the case. What I will ask uh, each of you uh, is to give us an opportunity to sit down with you and go through it line by line. This is about public accountability. Um, I'm happy to take your questions. Let me make sure the team, my team, uh, introduces themselves. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Alicia Linden. I'm the chief of the civil rights section. An excellent lawyer. Good afternoon. Andy Mandrela uh, in the civil rights section. An excellent lawyer. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tony Towns. I'm also an assistant attorney general in the civil rights section. Long time native Washingtonian, a Washington football team fan, and a great lawyer. Questions? Mr. Please. Attorney General, what Actually, you, I thought you, they you had a question over here Alex, first. Please. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, how does the fact that you're leaving office impact the investigation and the launch of the 
I think it's a great question. Look, we've been at it, as I said, for one year. Uh, that's a lot of time in a case. Um, you know, the fact is that uh, we had no choice uh, based on our findings uh, to file the lawsuit. Um, I am leaving office at 11.59 a.m. on January 2nd. Uh, Brian Schwab uh, is the AG elect. Uh, Brian is quite capable. Uh, I expect that Brian, in the normal course, uh, will meet and sit down with these lawyers, that he will utilize his own team uh, to evaluate uh, what we're doing. I'm quite confident that this case is going to continue to move forward. Sir. Please provide your name. Sure. Ken Delanian from NBC News. Mr. Attorney General, what exactly are you alleging that the NFL in particular did wrong here? Sure. Uh, the National Football League, as distinct from the commanders and Mr. Snyder, and we did name Roger Goodell, the commissioner, as a defendant uh, because Mr. Goodell was intimately involved in the decision making. What we're concerned about with respect to the National Football League is that they told the public that they were coming in to conduct an independent investigation. You'll remember that they essentially had the investigator who was hired, Beth Wilkinson, report to them. They have statement after statement about accountability, and we know that there was no accountability. We know that pursuant to an agreement with Mr. Snyder, Mr. Snyder was given access to information, and that Mr. Snyder, at the end of the day, determined, along with the NFL, what little you all and we know about the investigation. That is a violation of law in the District of Columbia under our Consumer Protection Act, and I look forward to holding Roger Goodell and the National Football League accountable. And do you believe that the current investigation by former U.S. Attorney Mary Jo White is also a compromise? I don't know um, about that investigation. Uh, that investigation has been going on for a long time. I respect uh, Ms. White, having worked with her on numerous matters. Uh, and we'll see. The proof, as they say, is in the pudding. Um, can you help me in terms of yeah, identifying sorry. folks? Matt Barris with the Washington Times. Mr. Stephen, what did you make of the team's statement yesterday that you called for the team to uh, your eyes? Look here, um, as a lawyer who's been practicing law for 30 years, uh, doing my job now almost eight years, uh, it's customary um, for bullies uh, to try to bully uh, victims. It's customary for bullies to try to bully even public servants. Um, I looked at that comment candidly. It wasn't surprising. I held my fire because I knew that the public would catch our back. And boy, oh boy, on social media, I'm told, I don't read social media, did the public catch our back. What Mr. Snyder sought to do is what he does all the time. Deflect attention from his own misconduct, impute motivation or intention uh, onto someone else here, the AG, in other instances, the victims, uh, and otherwise try to burn the bridge and trash the city. Uh, that's not going to happen here. Thanks for the question. John Doman, WTOP Radio. Hey, um, a lot of this, I, I guess, is alleged to have occurred, I guess, in Virginia. The team plays in Maryland, they're based in Virginia. How do you have standing for a lot of things that? didn't necessarily happen in the district? It's an excellent question. Um, and I, I, I just really want to bring you in a little bit to the law. So the lawsuit that we're filing today is a consumer protection civil lawsuit. Quite notably and somewhat regrettably, it is not a civil case that is vindicating the victims uh, who allege, and our evidence demonstrates this, sexual harassment. It's not a civil rights case. And the reason why we couldn't bring that is because indeed, as you asked, the facts, the conduct occurred in Maryland and Virginia. And I would invite the legal authorities in those jurisdictions to stand up with the 
or the victims and investigate that, that matter. Thanks for the question. Mr. Aldridge. Sure. The District of Columbia, uh, not unlike any other jurisdiction or state, uh, has a Consumer Protection Act. The Consumer Protection Act in the District of Columbia is the envy of many, many jurisdictions because it is broad. And what it covers is any material misstatement that a merchant or business makes that could impact consumers in the District of Columbia. Now I know that there are many Marylander fans, more power to them, and Virginia fans. But you know, Mr. Aldridge, that DC, except for the, the haters and the Cowboy fans, um, is all about the Washington football team. I grew up here too. And on a Monday morning after a loss, it was miserable. Nowadays, people don't even know who won or lost. So the Consumer Protection Act is all about DC residents right to be told the truth, especially when you're selling goods or services to them. Thank you. Help me out. Accountability, sir. Public accountability uh, for wrongdoing, uh, creating a misogynist and toxic workplace. Um, I don't believe to date that there has been public accountability uh, in a court of law where the allegations concern very serious violations of wrongdoing, where they're real victims. Victims, I might emphasize, sir, who stood up in the face of intimidation, investigations into their backgrounds, and nonetheless, as they say, persist and resist. Accountability is important, ESPN. Um, we have two last questions. Um, back here. Yes. Hey, my name is uh, Eric Bright. I'm from WUSA 9. Can you be specific about what the potential outcome of this civil lawsuit could be? What does that look like? Um, even though it is a civil lawsuit, uh, are you alleging any criminal uh, activity beyond violating a Consumer Protection Act? And I also want to give you an opportunity to address those who might say this is just a grandstanding move on your part that should be halted. I've given people a lot of reason to say that over the last eight years. A lot of defendants, um, I think uh, we were just checking today, anticipating your question. Um, that we have utilized the Consumer Protection Act over the last six years um, over and over again. There are court decisions that, uh, that you know, find that our consumer protection enforcement is valid and lawful. Defendants have returned $125 million to district residents uh, through restitution, payments, and penalties. Um, we think it is damn important that there be accountability. And we're bringing this lawsuit not as a criminal matter because we don't have criminal jurisdiction over adults. We're bringing this matter as a civil matter in a court of law with a fair process for the defendants so that the public might have a sense of accountability. Again, no one is above the law. Your neighbor, please. Sure. So under the Consumer Protection Act, um, you know, in terms of monetary penalty, uh, to the extent that lies have been uh, uttered 
Um, for each misstatement, that's $5,000 maximum fine. It racks up pretty, uh, you know, easy and, uh, and uh, exponentially, if you will. Um, again, I think the public needs to know about an incredible product that I spend a lot of time watching, the National Football League. It needs to know that when the National Football League tells you that ethics matters, that honesty matters, that treating people fairly in a workplace matters, that there will be accountability, that there actually is accountability. So just a quick follow up, you didn't use $5,000 per misstatement. Is that a public misstatement or what is that exactly? And, and sure. Does that, what does that exponentially mean? Yeah, this is a, if you want to sit down and we can do the math with the calculators, I think it's going to be a lot of, do, a lot of zeros. Um, just go back and take a look at the suits we brought. We brought a suit, oh my goodness, just a few weeks ago. Um, that resolved itself for $10 million as housing discrimination and consumer protection violations. I'm not going to value this case right now. What I am going to say is this case is going to require depositions, sworn testimony, and accountability uh, from some of the most powerful men and organizations in the United States of America. And that's doing the right thing. But no specific damages that you're asking for? I'm not, uh, haven't calculated uh, the damages to the penny. I'm happy to sit down with you and uh, you bring your calculator, we'll bring ours. Thank you. I have one last question. If the Snyder sell the team, does this investigation go away or will you continue no matter who owns the team? The conduct, the defendants are Dan Snyder, he sells the team, he's still a defendant, Dan Snyder, Roger Goodell, the commanders, and the NFL. The conduct at issue was at a time period where there was no other owner. And the way the law works is that legal wrongs uh, committed during a period of time um, need to be vindicated regardless of whether uh, there's a, a sale of the franchise. This lawsuit will continue. There will be accountability um, unless and until it's settled. And if it is settled, we're going to tell you everything that we found. Thank you so okay. much. We're happy to take another question. One, one last question there. He was uh, very patient. Looking Please all, introduce yourself. Darren Meade, WSA 9. Looking at all the findings that you found, do you believe that Dan Snyder should still own this franchise? You know, I, I come to this as a nearly, I guess, 55 plus year DC resident. And to some extent, uh, you know, my personal views uh, don't matter on that question. Um, I am repulsed by the conduct at issue, the idea of intimidating victims, the idea of trying to scare them into backing down in their allegations um, is outrageous and it calls on all of us to do what we can to bring accountability. Great. Thank you so well, much, everyone. My name is Benito Axios. Do you plan to subpoena the Snyder team? Of course. <laughs> and what about the status of the tickets investigation into the financial? That's a good question. There will be more news on that next week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.